Okay, another use case here. So uh, thank you for joining. Uh, my name is Eric Rudine. I'm field CTO for CPAC, and I'm joined with Ron DeVoe, who is our CTO. And today we're going to talk about knock stock convergence and auditing. This is a very interesting topic for a lot of our customers. Uh, you know, I think it's it's pretty clear today that security is one of the biggest uh, top of mind issues for any organization. Anybody running customer data, uh, healthcare, obviously there's compliance requirements, financial services. Uh, there's a lot of different impacts if a customer gets hacked or if they're starting to have internal challenges related to malware or whatever use case it could be. Um, the network provides insights to help surface up those issues. And this is really important. This is what we talked about in Security Field Day is this is a form of augmentation, right? Uh, packets serve multiple functions. They can feed our ecosystem uh, with packet data streamed into an IDS or an NDR solution to surface up vulnerabilities. Uh, it could be for SIM for surfacing up uh, correlated events. So packets serve that function, but we also get uh, session-based metrics that also indicate things. And then we're able to use the AI to also surface up security issues from the network data. So Ron's gonna walk you through uh, a couple examples of how this works, how the tool, two products and the two teams really are starting to function together to improve the security posture for the organization. Thank you. Yeah, so <clears throat> what we wanted to say here, and, and again, we'll, not again, we're gonna uh, do some of this uh, quickly. Uh, the idea is we went to, to the security field day and tell the security people, hey, you should talk to the networking people. They have a lot of information that you can actually leverage. So we want to tell the networking people have a, a lot of information that you can leverage, go back to the security team and make the, organ the security uh, posture of the organization uh, better, right? So part of that is about, uh, we work with many enterprises in the, in the space of, uh, uh, financial services and, and hospitals, and, and there is there are very strict regulations there, right? Whether uh, HIPAA or FSI, and and you can think about the information that we have here, and and it wasn't intended to be read, but the idea is that if you take each one of these uh, regulations, you can break it down to say, okay, here's the information that you can uh, get from the network uh, from your observability solution, right? So. We will go for, uh, we'll show an example in a second. And the idea is again, like, can, can I take my information that is there and create either a dashboard or create uh, some information or a report that is driven from the networking uh, observ network observability solution that can be fed into the security tools. So technically what we're gonna show a lot of that is uh, our, we have our own DPI engine, the packet inspection. So we uh, look on every single session, we extract the DNS queries, we extract all the HTTPS queries. Uh, these are, even when most of the networks run fully encrypted, there's huge amount of very relevant information that is still, uh, can be, in, can be uh, viewed, is still in plain text, right? Which domains you're accessing, making sure that your LDAP uh, servers actually use encryption, uh, the TLS certificates, uh, did they expire or not? So all of that is done inside our packet capture and analytics engine. So if I go for a demo. Yeah, uh, go ahead. So for this use case and the previous use case, do we need any additional infrastructure or the infrastructure? infrastructure that you normally have in your design yeah. takes care of it. It's there, that's part of the offering. No additional yeah. servers or anything. Yeah, it's all that. So actually this one is another interesting one. So what this one uh, we did is uh, we asked the LLM engine to say, what are the relevant HIPAA uh, regulations to the information we have? And can you create a dashboard on Grafana that has that? So this dashboard was completely created by Grafana's MCP with our prompts. So this is kind of the another part of the answer to your question, right? Because we may, I think the idea is the reason we do want to get the um, chat all the way to the user, in the foreseeable future, they're gonna be use cases that we are not aware of. But if you give them enough tools, they don't need, to, you don't need to know anything about Grafana beyond telling it when it doesn't get it right, you didn't get it right. So it will figure it out at the end, right? So you can create on your own the report that you care about, right? So this is just one way to show the relevant information to 
uh, HIPAA. There are many other critical things that are run in your network, whether it's LDAP and you want to make sure that people are using under encrypted uh, infrastructure and are not using uh, simple access. Uh, <clears throat> TLS security, making sure that certificates are there, that people don't, uh, that no server is going down to 1.2 or one, sorry, 1 1.1 or, or below, uh, that the um, uh, cipher suites are what uh, is, is relevant. So all this information is coming in from, uh, is coming in from, from our tools. Or oh, another one is all the um, domains that people accessed over the last 24 hours. I have a question though. I mean. Go ahead. I mean, I, I, I think that's cool, right? So I think these things are all useful. I think back to, to so for HIPAA compliance or even PCI compliance, there is the concept of you know, topology, segmentation, yes. all these elements. Yeah. So the, the, not the danger, but like the convenience is it, it, it plots these kind of graphs, like kind of cool, right? And you, you feel good about it, but it actually didn't address the actual compliance. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like say it's PCI compliance, okay. right? Without the topology, without knowing what applications are running where, and you know which are your POS, you know where's, where's your data, that 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 nice graph and image actually doesn't tell you your state of compliance, right? So, how how do you see, like how do you see getting there? How do you tell the LLM um, in a way that says, for well, PCI compliance, go look at the topology, you know, find the data sources, find it, you know, and, and all that. After that, walk through it. And then using CPACket, figure out whether there are probes in the right places or not. And then according to PCI compliance, you know, like, you know, section blah, 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 you know, 1.3.1, we need to verify this. Then we need to verify that. And so out of all these things, I validated that we can check these things with certainty, and that's in your dashboard. There are these 50 things that we can't check or I don't know how to check that you need to validate before you know that you're compliant. How do you see us sort of getting to that stage? Yeah, I think to, to, so I'm the last one that will say that AI is ready to replace us. Yeah, no, I, 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 well, I agree. I think, you know, I, I, we all agree. We all know sort of where it is, right? And, and these are very, these are indications of the possibilities, which is, I, I think, why we're all excited. Right. Um, I think what I'm trying to understand is you guys think about this more than maybe I do, right? Yeah. And so I'm just trying to understand when you look yeah. at these things, how do you think about getting there, right? right. What's the path and what do you hope to happen right, from a capability standpoint to get you there. Right, so the way that you, it's all about the workflow, right? The workflow starts with someone that understand HIPAA, yeah. right? I'm not yeah. necessarily understand HIPAA, right? right. And say, so okay, does, yeah. that's how it translates. Then you say, okay, what of all these sections mm -hmm. you can actually help me with, right? And if, for example, you say, I want to make sure that there is right segmentation, yeah. that's something that an observability solution can help you, right? Because we have, so, there is a, we, when we deploy, we don't have context to what a, a, a physical monitoring point is, mm -hmm. but the user does. Mm -hmm. So all this metadata or what they call RAG, right, access yeah. right. Is, is part of what you can give us. And then you say, instead of asking VLAN 11 to VLAN 12, you can ask, am I seeing any traffic between HR and finance? So, so there is an enrichment phase yep. that will have yeah. to go in. And if you think about the circle that Eric showed, yeah. there is a deployment and yes, have someone, our customer, or if we outsource it to someone, will have to enrich it with the relevant data. Yeah, if I could just add some additional context mm -hmm. to that. There's a lot of products, like uh, most organizations run multiple tools. Right. Um, you know, the, those tools rely on uh, process. They run, they run on other types of rules that uh, based on compliance but they're all dependent on data. Right. And so I think our philosophy is we need to be getting the data at the time that it's requested. It needs to be enriched with context. Mm -hmm. And then we need to have uh, surface it up to the right person at the right time. Right. But we're not necessarily the top of the stack doing all the regulatory compliance checks. Right. But the data that we're providing will serve a lot of functions. Mm -hmm. Got it. Okay, so we'll see how fast I think we're running behind time. But the idea here is really where you want to go to is show me all the suspicious domains. And the way that that tool is already, so if you remember what I showed you just before we left is, yeah, I can generate a report with all the domains, sorry, all the domains, right? But that's a lot of chaff, right? How to figure out the width. So here the tool does know that, okay, it's gonna go through all the domains that we have. Make sure that it removes everything that is CPACket. Make sure that it removes everything that is a, a CDN or any cloud provider. So it cleans up everything that is 
uh, kind of, uh, and you know, it's going to run for a little more than we have, but I can just show you the result. And it's going to run, make sure, check, check that the domain names are, uh, check if the domain name is, looks like a DGA, like if the domain name came from Iran or somewhere else. And it comes up with, okay, here's five that I think are suspicious, right? So that's the idea, right? So as, as you go through the same use case over and over, you can get into, okay, here's what the definition is. Part of that is universal. Part of that will have to be in the context of the user. And do you have, do you have the option to drill down into that stuff from your dashboard? Like, oh, the dashboard? Yeah. So, so I see this pie chart. Can I click on that and kind of drill into it and get more details? But then I also have the option to go to my chat and say, you know, I, I don't want to click through this stuff. Just tell me what it is. Totally. Yeah. Okay. So Thanks. again, we, in the previous one, we showed the workflow. So yes, uh, there, are there were links there. So when I click link, I can see all the details for that server. So we have both, right? So today, what users are using out in the field is more of the dashboard access, right? So we have to prepare the dashboard and think what we are showing is like, well, it can, it can evolve, right? With, with AI, MCPs, these things they can generate on their own and they can go back and forth. And I technically go back and forth between them when I investigate something today. Okay, and, and where I was kind of going with that is some, I mean, it's, it's great to have all of this information. It's a ton of very useful information. Sometimes it's a lot to look through though, and you want to kind of just focus on a yes. specific area and okay, that is the area I want to go. Let me, let me double click and let me look at this and the, okay, now that's what I wanted to see right there. Yes. Okay. That's absolutely the problem we're seeing that we, have huge amount, so there is huge amount of data. There is huge amount of information. Yeah. How do you figure out the handful of things that you can actually do something about? Right. right. It's fantastic to have all that data in the first place, but sometimes it's you know the whole less is more thing where it's like okay, but I can't focus on all that data, which is obviously what the tool is is helping us with. So exactly. Yep. Very good. Thank you. Totally. All right. Right. Thank you for that demo. So just to summarize, um, I think what we've what we're really kind of getting here is this consistency theme of making sure that you're getting the right data to the right person or to the right tool. And a lot of uh, organizations have SOC tools or SOC teams. They need those network insights, and they already have processes and workflows that we can tap into. Um, they have other technologies that need those information at real time to, in order to secure the enterprise. The other thing is, is those reports are really essential. And so what we're doing is we're getting more insights automatically through the prompts. And now we're, we're taking the, the native data that it has if it's understanding of a compliance protocol and then surfacing that up to the user. Integrating that from a real-time perspective, obviously that gets to the SIM, that gets to the SOC, that's uh, how they operate. So those anomalies and the other types of alerts coming from CPacket to inform normal processes that happen uh, on the back end.